I V M. Hey everybody, welcome to a very special episode of the Geek Food Podcast with me, Tejas. This week I have with me Jishnu and Abhimanyu. How's it going, guys? Abhimanyu, how are you? You've, it's been a while since you've been on the show. Yeah, pajamas. Pajama life. Yeah. Uh, Jishnu, how are you? Are you in pajamas? No, I can see you. Sweatpants. Sweatpants. Sweet. Do you own a pair of pajamas or do you uh, sleep I do, fancy? I used to. No, I, uh, uh, I'm a boxers man myself. Okay. <laughs> it's in- I don't just think many case. people wear sweatpants in India. <laughs> you want to know? No, I think yeah. This is sweatpants. this is my first pair of sweatpants uh-huh. in the country. Last time I had sweatpants was in the United States, and I haven't been there in like seven years. Yeah. yeah. So I bought it on a whim, and like six months ago, and I'm so glad I did. Oh man, I think sweatpants are amazing. So for last Halloween, I dressed up as Peter B. Parker from Into the Spider Verse. And, um, and, and basically the characters wearing sweatpants through that. So that was my first pair in a very long time and man, it changed my world. So sweatpants are a go. With uh, AC, yeah. With AC, a little bit. Like Thundercats. Yes. Sweatpants are a go. Yeah, 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 of oh. course. Um, <laughs> and, uh, also, <laughs> so, so this week, uh, we've got Abhimanyu, uh, on the show because, uh, all three of us share a passion for video gaming. And, um, and we, we, we game using video, like, uh, we watch on the TV screens or the monitors and using a console, just to what console do you own? And, uh, how did you come to that decision? I'm a Xbox man okay. because I had a 360 uh, when I was in the States again, all through college, I had to leave it there along with like 70% of my belongings. So it was a very sad day. Right. And then, um, I took a long break from gaming, uh, for about, yeah, maybe five years. And then about eight or nine months ago, I got the Xbox One. Nice. Uh, because, mainly just because it was so much cheaper than the PS4. It is a lot cheaper. I got it, I got it for like 18,000 rupees, You got I the think. digital and, one, right? Yeah, I got the S. So I wanted yeah. the 4K capable guy. Uh, but so the only downside is that it doesn't take CDs. Um, so it's a limited storage space. So it's, it's, only, it's, a, yeah. it's a terabyte, which is fine. Yeah. I don't need to have access to that many games at the same time. I'm never going to play that many games at the same <laughs> time anyway. True. Um, yeah. But yeah, I got it for 18 and I believe the PS4 at the time, the Pro, which also does 4K, was about 27 or 26. So it was like a good 10 grand, give or take more. Yeah. You know? yeah. So and with was, Xbox Game Pass, you get so many games for free if you just pay, I think, like 700 yeah. a month. Yeah. So the long yeah. one is actually yep. much cheper and they just get like it is. AAA titles all the time. So at home over like, here, we have a... a, a f- we got, everything. we got we got a few. So Abhimanyu you and I live together, and uh, obviously because of that, you know, we spend a lot of time uh, uh, watching movies and playing video games. And we have a we had we first bought the PS4 Pro because uh, I really alive. wanted it. Yeah, I really wanted it for for Spider Man because uh, that was the game that kind of changed the yeah. the the, mm. the switch in my brain, saying, "Man, yo, I'm turning thirty. We gotta we gotta have video games in this house." Mm. And uh, and so we bought that first, and then I think you- the first conversation was, "How are like current gen consoles? Like, are the graphics that good? <laughs> like, we didn't know <laughs> at all. Like, uh, we just I, I mean, I was playing stuff on Steam, but yeah, there yeah, was but not, it's not like yeah current gen. I don't think your laptop could have handled it. Mm. I couldn't have. I, I mean, yeah. like we, I, I've been able to play a few games here, but not without compromise, you know, like I didn't want to ruin my system for work and stuff. So then when we saw the trailer for Spider-Man, we were just like, oh, yeah, cool. It's time to maybe, you know, take the plunge. So we ended mm. up buying a PS4 Pro and then uh, Abhimanyu later on got a uh, Xbox One S. S. Yeah. The same thing that you have as well, Jishnu. And then yeah. I bought a Nintendo Switch just because I'm a hoe. And I was just like, I gotta, I gotta be a Nintendo guy again because I remember fond um, memories of owning a, a Game Boy and a Game Boy Advance and a Game Boy Color. Mm-hmm. As how a much kid. was the Switch when you bought it? Uh, the Switch like was 20, 23 when I bought. It. I got it on a deal. I think I got it on like at around Christmas. So it was like around twenty two, twenty three, which was the lowest it had reached. Wow. And uh, and I was just like, okay, cool. Like I, I got a. So 
Yeah. The Switch is more expensive than an Xbox One. I didn't know that. Yeah, it is. Man, the wow. Switch obviously it has a it has a bunch of like you know a pros to it because of just the ability to kind of dock and redock mm. and and and, and yeah. undock and you know take the game everywhere. So I really did. I wanted a portable thing, but now it's like almost permanently but, docked because I'm not being, riddle, I'm not going anywhere. Riddle, riddle me this. Yeah. Apart from um, the Zelda game that came out with it, um, and Super Mario Odyssey, how often? Well, no. So apart from specifically the Zelda game, I'm mm-hmm. talking about games that are adventure games that are story driven games that aren't just sort of like get really good at the mechanism and then just rinse and repeat kind of games, mm-hmm. uh, which is the majority of what I see people playing on the Switch almost exclusively. Yeah. How much do you find yourself playing games where you can get lost in a world as opposed to a rinse like, and repeat? Kind I, I, of game I, I play the Switch on the Switch uh, maybe every couple of days because I mean just for a, as a time thing, but. Um, uh, but I, I definitely think there are more like indie games on the Switch than than uh, than there are like mainstay kind of like AAA type games, and yeah, like the exactly. Switch has become that you know console which is more for like indie or games, and that's something anyway. Absolutely, I love. yeah. Which is which is why I, I didn't yeah. pick it up. Which is why because I, I I I always preferred the story driven games and like the one player mm. just extended. No, no, no. I, sorry, I want to I want to just take uh, take it back. I, and not to say indie games don't have stories, but it's just like the it's not your uh, AAA title in terms of like you know RPG yeah. or I no, mean there I are mean, now RPGs. it is now you have like there the are Witcher. RPGs, but no, 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 I mean, like, like I said, it came out with Zelda, so there are some for sure. Yeah, yeah. so I just never see people playing them. That's that's what yeah. I mean. So like, most people... of the 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 big thing about Nintendo has always been that Nintendo's like a family <laughs> yes honorable family company and man you have to understand like nintendo is like more than 100 years old as a company they were a playing card company back Mm -hmm. in the 1800s like the late 1800s is when they started and uh basically they went on from there and they have just had a they have a legacy of giving you quality product so so when they created like a nintendo back like the the way we know it in the 80s uh all of it was like family friendly stuff so most of nintendo's games are co-op games or couch co-op or local co-op or you know internet co-op games so they make them that way because they want to kind of foster that kind of you know fun uh, with the console yeah. but yeah obviously ps4 and xbox are the champions of like you know the really hardcore story-based stuff in fact that is what I, our episode is about today so today jishnu abhimanyu and i we are going to talk about some of our favorite I, i've decided to keep two categories one is open world Completely open world, and the other one is sandbox, which kind of is. Uh, yeah, I got a question. What's the difference between those two? So I think open. <laughs> <laughs> so I think open world. I, I think they are more or less the same thing, but I like to define it like. I think you can f around a lot more in sa- sandbox, right? Like you create your own, your own rules or something. No, not 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 necessarily. I I, I maybe I am not the perfect guy to describe the difference, but I'd say The Witcher and say Spider Man Four. Uh, oh, Spider-Man 4, I'm saying. Spider-Man and Witcher are two uh, different types of games, right? Like what, uh, The Witcher is more of an, like an open world, completely open world game uh, where there's literally no end to it and like, or like an Assassin's Creed mm-hmm. like now and it's... But uh, uh, Spider-Man is, is a sandbox game in the sense that it's got a massive open world, but it is still only one map. And it's a okay, small, I haven't, much I haven't map. played, since I don't have a PlayStation, I haven't played Spider-Man yet, but uh, I believe Spider-Man is akin to the Arkham series. Is that fair? Yes, yeah. exactly. So, 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 so can I like say, that. so then could I say, by, by this definition, the Arkham series is, is a, not a sandbox game? Because like you said with Spider-Man, it's like you're constricted to the missions and no, no, you no, don't no. really so, find yourself okay. playing it too much <laughs> beyond that. Let's break it down one further. Let's break it down one further. Okay. Uh, say a game like I'm with uh, you. I'm with you with Assassin's Creed. I follow what you mean about the yeah, difference so between Assassin's, Assassin's Creed. And if Creed. Arkham is like Spider Man, then I understand. So maybe I'll make three differentiations then. So uh, there's <laughs> there's there's Arkham. Uh, sorry, there's uh, Assassin's Creed, which is Origins uh, onwards, uh, and uh, maybe even uh, Valhalla, which is coming out, and also uh, what is the one with Odyssey, right? Yeah. So those yeah. are um, those are really like open world games, which are RPGs. Then mm-hmm. there's the sandbox kind of game, I think, which is uh, like an Arkham or a Spider-Man. And then there is level games, like, you know, like Jedi Fallen Order or Super Mario mm-hmm. Odyssey, which are basically yeah. maps within uh, right. one level. And then you keep kind of changing yeah. and they'll make a mechanism for it saying, oh, there's a new planet mm-hmm. this is a, or there's a, in Super Mario, it's in, this is a new kingdom, there's a new kingdom, there's a new kingdom. In Jedi Fallen Order, it's like, okay, we have to go to this planet, yeah. we have to go to this planet. So those are like yeah. uh, constrained kind maps. Kind of like No Man's Sky. 
No, No Man's Sky is unlimited. No, that's the so that, 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 that is that. So that game is like the bop of all of the, these games. Though that game, No Man's Sky, <laughs> was made with a, a randomly generated engine, like a, a, a procedurally generated environment. So it's it's basically an endless game, like the universe itself, which you can travel miles and miles, and the computer itself, based on where you're going and how you're going, and and so what it's, it's decides, AI it's an AI right? uh, device that kind of generates new planets and its own flora and fauna and characters and everything like that. So it just it's that is like magical. Obviously, it's it's another being all together. For, for my own amusement, define the Sims. The Sims. I think The Sims is a, that is a no classic idea. sandbox. Trapped. It's a sandbox. Trap box. <laughs> because it's one map. I mean, but uh, you yeah. can do a lot of things in that. Yeah, It's a simulator, right? Yeah, it's it's a it's, it's a, a strategy simulator. game, but uh, yeah, again, like, it's, uh, this is, we can keep we can define it. Like goats, we can do this. The like cows right. come home till the goats come. Till the goats come home. All right. Um, so I'll tell you what. Let's take a break here at this point, since we have kind of defined the the range of what we're going to be speaking about today, and uh, we'll come back and we'll talk about some of our favorite games within these, and maybe some of the games that we just spoke about right now. Hey, everybody, welcome to another great week on the IVM Podcast Network. If you're not following us on social media, please do. We're IVM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. I'd like to thank our sponsors this week, Paytm Money. It really has been a great week this week. We've had two of our first international cricketer show, uh, people who have played for their respective sides. We had WV Raman come on Edges and Sledges, the cricket podcast. If you haven't heard that, you should be listening to that if you enjoy cricket. It's really one of the best out there. And you should also definitely check out Monty Panasar, who showed up on Cyrus Says. Uh, that was another really interesting conversation that occurred. If you haven't been and we're listening to a few of our shorter shows, please do that as well. Ashish Vidyarthi has been doing a great job for us. we got 30 episodes now on Begin the Journey. I think you'll really enjoy that show if you haven't listened to it. It helps you with, like, you know, understanding what's going on in this tough time and how to deal with it from a mental health perspective. We've also had some really fun stuff come up on the Smile India show. Shifa has been doing a lot of really good stories over there. Things would just make you happy, so definitely do check that out. And on the more serious side, make sure that you're checking out our regular shows like the Pragati Podcast, All Things Policy. They're definitely going to keep you up to date on what's going on in this COVID world. And with that, let's get you on with your show. Hey guys, we're back. We're talking about video games because we don't do that that often on this show. Um, Jishnu, how about you start by telling us uh, some of the games you're playing? What, what's your favorite? Uh, maybe Sandbox or and or uh, you I'm know. I'm just going to tell you a game. You tell me what category you want to put Fair in enough. for your own amusement. But uh, the reason I don't talk about video games much is because I'm very slow with them. I don't bounce around between games too much when i find a game i like um i live with it for a long time and i take my time with it i'm not the kind of person who will like for instance since we mentioned arkham uh, i've played all of them i've never had any inclination to go looking for all riddler trophies i couldn't <laughs> care less about I that stuff. I, think I, have, uh, I have i've played i've played a bunch of the assassin's creed games i stopped at around i think i played i think i finished yeah i finished three um, so I did every Assassin's Creed game up until three. And again, I never got like a hundred percent completion, but you know, I, I do a fair bit of the, I do all the side missions, but then the ones like in Arkham, the Riddler trophies, like every game has its one little thing that has literally a thousand iterations of this that you just so, yeah. laboriously just go through. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, okay, now this is no longer fun. This is just for like an OCD person to feel satisfied. And I'm not, I'm not that OCD. Uh, so I don't need to do that. Yeah, yeah, I know. What also, you mean. I just don't have time. Yeah, like I, I you know. Um, <laughs> the, but the other thing is, I'm also really slow to pick up momentum in in games, which is probably why I can't bounce between games too much. So the only games that I find myself sort of like mindlessly playing as just like you know turn my brain off and just sort of ease into something for like just for f- sake will be an FPS game, and mm-hmm. I'm partial to Call of Duty. Mm-hmm. Um, in particular, the older, like the, like w- I just played the world war two one. I friggin' loved it. Um, I just got Warzone. It's free. Kinda, right? Eh, right. On the are fence you a, about are it's, you yeah, a it's battle free. royale guy? It's like a hundred GB. <laughs> eh, yeah, exactly. I, I have to delete a bunch of stuff, yeah. but I'm not, I'm not, I realize I don't think I am a battle royale guy. Mm. I haven't given it a fair chance, but that's because to my main point, I've been playing uh, red dead redemption Two very late in the game. I know. But I am over the moon about this game. Nice. Describe I, it for somebody. I would who like hasn't to say. It. So for one, I'd like to say I would like to think I'm almost done. But the best thing about this, and again, this is because I'm so slow with games. Apparently, I shouldn't be surprised at how long this game is, because to me, being like a Call of Duty guy and being an FPS boy for the most part, 
uh, I'm used to games that last like eight hours, give or take. Okay. This one is going on like freaking 20, 30 hours yeah, maybe. Yeah, that's, no, and that's still light for an And RPG. I couldn't be happier. Yeah. I couldn't be happier because it, um, so if you haven't played it or if you haven't heard of it, I'd be very surprised if you listen to this and haven't heard of the game. It's, I think, a far better version of GTA. And I've played uh, GTA 4 and 5. Uh, I finished 5. I didn't finish 4 because uh, I just got tired of it. But 5 I really enjoyed and I finished all the way through. And the difference is that this is just GTA in the Old West. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but is what... A pretty like labor-intensive, like small, small things? It like is, if your horse yes. is tired, you got to sit down, so, <laughs> drink coffee... <laughs> Yes, but, yes, 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 it is. I don't On know how, paper, how I'm, I'm with you. Like, this is what everybody told me. Like, everybody that I've mentioned this to when I've told them, like, I've been killing my time hunting moose and bison, and I can tell you the minutian details between an elk <laughs> and a pronghorn yeah, doe. That's good. Um, it sounds boring as hell, and I'm and on paper it is, and I would believe you if you told me the same. But somehow, unlike a GTA, unlike... Um, Games like Arkham and Assassin's Creed, where I have problems with, like, you're making me just do laborious tasks that mm. I couldn't care less about. Somehow, I don't know why exactly, but it's just more, far more deeply satisfying for me to go on the hunt for some random mm. legendary white fox in the middle of the Alps, or wherever, not Alps, but uh, Rocky Mountains, I guess, and um, spend hours just hunting for some random animal that will afford me some new coat that I can now dress my character in. Like, it has very little to do with the game. And you know what I realized? How much I love this game when two things happened. One was, I bought this game very quickly after getting the Xbox last September. I played it for about six weeks, and then life got busy, and I paused on the game for months. I picked the game back up in March once lockdown began. And I'm sure we've all had those moments where you're playing a game that's so vast like this, where there's like that one next thing that you have to do and it's under your fucking nose, but you spend weeks running around in circles like a headless chicken going like, where the hell is the thing? Why can't I do the thing? Why can't I progress the story? And I thought like an idiot that because of the game mechanics, I had to go and do those Riddler Trophy-esque to laborious level tasks to level up. I thought I had to just go and hunt like 50 different animals before yeah, they would the move the story along. Yeah. When, yeah, when in, in reality... It was the simplest little just go here, talk to this guy, boom, you're in the next mm. world. I was like, wow. <laughs> but here's the thing. While doing that laborious shit, maybe this is just quarantine doing its, <laughs> pulling its number on me. I had a time of my life spending hours just chasing a f***ing crow <laughs> and a snake <laughs> and like unlocking new horses and finding new names for them and shit like that. Like oh, I had a blast. And now the story is progressing and it's doubling down on me because... I've definitely logged like 80 hours, maybe 100 on this game at this point. And, I st- and I'm so close to finishing it. And there are so many moments where I thought, okay, this is it. This is the end of the thing. This is the big one. This is the big move. This is the big robbery, whatever the hell. <laughs> it never ends. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't be happier because the story is just immaculate. The voice acting is brilliant. It looks beautiful. And um, I thought the Arkham games, especially Arkham Knight, was like some of the best writing I'd seen in a long time. Mm. I think those games pale in comparison to this one. Have you seen now, Jablinski games when the guy from Red Dead yes. Uh, yes. gives uh, so good. Jack a voice note it. from the character's yeah, voice? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so fun. I, I basically, point is I couldn't recommend this game more. Nice. But then again, it's also like a couple of years old, I believe. So this is it's, very it's old. It's only a couple. Just, yeah, dude, for this yeah. kind of game, when you have to log yeah. in like so many hours just to kind of get the best experience yeah. out of it, yeah, it takes... I mean, even I, when I played Origins, which is like the... The last game I played, which I was like so invested in that, you know, there I love. But, uh, but yeah, I think uh, that was the last time I played. But even that took was, I, I, even I started that maybe two, three years after the fact. Yeah, like, man, that's, that's the like, thing, man. Like I tried playing Witcher 3. I got about seven hours in. And just to progress in the main mission, I have to go around and do about 20 <laughs> side missions get some random ass potions, level up, and then now- continue the motion. And I was like, oh man, because I, I was really enjoying the story. Like, but these yeah, other uh, things but, but were do those resource side missions management. Feel good? Sorry? Do those side missions feel okay. good? Like when you're doing random side missions, do they feel they, like a pain or do they do, feel... They do feel good. But the thing is, I, I don't know, as I get older, I want to know, I want to know how the story ends as quickly as possible. That might've been right. because the game before that I was playing was The Last of Us 2. And that's... The that, uh, Last of Us, just The Last sorry, of Us. Sorry, just The Last of Us. And that was just like, you know, 
straight story, story, story. And I was like, okay, maybe, you know, which, uh, let me see how the story is like. And honestly, the last was, was like at the back of my mind. It's like, couldn't really enjoy it. But right now I'm playing Arkham, uh, sorry, uh, Assassin's Creed Origins. And that is an RPG, but I don't mind going around doing all the side quests. And because it's, you know, it's tied down in history. I think because it's the focused. best game. Yeah, <laughs> I'm really getting into it. So I might actually go back to Witcher 3 after I'm done with the Origins. Because I've never actually completed an RPG in my life. I mean, you, you can't. Oh, I mean, you can. Yeah. But it's just like the point is like for these games uh, is just that you have to decide whether you want the story or you want the journey. And the, and the journey sometimes is far more rewarding than, yeah. than what, you know, epic conclusion they can concoct. And that's yeah. fine, I think. Yeah. I'm, I'm 100% with you. And then I played Red Dead. <laughs> And my right. mind was blown. Because so, it, let's take a, doing let's take a quick break. We're going to come back. We'll, we'll discuss uh, some more games in this category. Namaskar. This is Ashish Vidyarthi. Yes, my friend, these are challenging times. But in these challenging times, we can create something extraordinary. Do take time to listen to my podcast, Begin the Journey. Available on the IVM podcast, website, app, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Remember, we have a great opportunity or life. Cheers. Hey, we're back. We're talking about open world, sandbox, RPG, video games. They're just all in the same category. I want to talk about uh, Super Mario Odyssey. I'm playing it. I know it was the first game that released with Nintendo Switch. So I played Breath of the Wild and then it gave me anxiety. So I had to stop halfway through. I don't really, I can't. You know, there's something about the Nintendo sound effects, right? Which goes like, every time you do something, it's like, ding, 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 ding. And it just, I don't know, it just makes me shit myself. I, I don't know why. So I had to kind of put a pause on that game after playing it for like 30, 40 hours. Uh, but I went back to the other game that was launched with the Switch, which is Sp- Super Mario Odyssey. And this is like a like a Jedi Fallen Order. It's like a, a map-based thing. But my God, it is a, it's the most chill game you'll ever play in your life. Uh, the most like no stress uh, game. Uh, and it's about... <laughs> The key mechanism, I'll just tell you this before we move on, is uh, that uh, Bowser has kidnapped Peach again to marry her. And he keeps going to these kingdoms to steal like one thing from each kingdom, like the cake or the wedding dress or the something else or the stew. And basically, uh, Princess Peach is wearing a tiara that is sentient, has eyes on it and is alive. And she he's stolen that also. And so the husband of that tiara <laughs> is uh, forms becomes your cap. And he says, okay, cool, Mario, le- I'm Cappy, you're Mario, let's go and get these girls back. And so you can toss your cap, that's the main thing of the game, that you can toss your hat into anything. And once you toss it onto anything, like a T-Rex, like a, like a, like a, like a, like a, like a Bob-omb or whatever, and you'll become that, or, you know, like, um, what are those other small guys called? Anyway, uh, so you can become those characters. But yeah, you keep going to every kingdom. But the cool thing about this is that it's ingenious with its me- uh, mechanics. It's got like no major story except the fact that the the gameplay is like classic Mario. If you, if you played like any N64 Mario or Super Mario 64 or anything like that, it's really, really good. Uh, nice open worlds, lots of secrets. And, I, and this is something that Nintendo has been talking about that I think Ubisoft, which is what I'm trying to segue through, uh, that Ubisoft wants to do, which is that they want to stop telling players where to find stuff. Like they want to like remove more elements from the maps of these games. So I think Valhalla, which is coming out, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, will, and like the next Nintendo games, will these big maps, right? These huge open worlds will have less and less elements on the map to tell you where to go and will rely more on exploration. Like Do you think they're yeah. kind of relying on these maps being so good because they want people to play as many hours as exactly. possible? Exactly, that's, that's the thing, right? Yeah. They Add want up, people right. to... So the, <clears throat> the, the Ubisoft head said that the next Assassin's Creed is going to be like 150 hours of gameplay. Oh my God. <laughs> but did like, they say it's going to be... I thought they said it was going to be like a shorter story somehow though? Maybe, the, yeah. Like, so the story will be short, right? Something like about story, it is like... Is like something, they said something about it is significantly lesser than the other games by design. For mm-hmm. sure. Like if you like, play... If, so if you Odyssey play through, is twice as big as Origins. Uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Sorry, yeah, yeah sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, no because this is my Odyssey also, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so how big is Valhalla compared so, to uh, uh, So I think Valhalla is going to be like... Again, it's going to be bigger than Odyssey. But I think now if you... Like the thing is about these games that... Uh, including Arkham. In the Arkham series, you can finish the main story mission. If you just follow the story... 15 hours. You yeah. can finish it in like 15 hours. Yeah, maybe even less. Yeah. Uh, like these speed runs that these guys do. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, but you got to be really good, right? Mm-hmm. Like the the way that yeah. we play, us noobs play games is that <laughs> we make sure we're a level up mm-hmm. higher than all the bad guys are facing at that point. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. we make sure that we can win because it's just easier mm-hmm. because we log in that's, the all des- the grinding. It's designed to help you do that. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. right? But yeah. some people who are good, like there's this one guy on YouTube who tried to finish Zelda on the the moment he starts the game. So Zelda is one of those games, the Breath of, Breath of the Wild, where you can go to the final kingdom and face the final villain right at the start of the game but you'll mm-hmm. like obviously you'll you'll get f***ed it's like that South Park yeah. episode where they're playing World of Warcraft <laughs> and they just try and yeah. yeah and they just stay in the cellar for like two weeks and try and so that's the that's the new way games are moving forward uh, but uh, yeah I will I will say that uh, I still have a um, you know soft spot for like games that have map based kind of like or which are level based Levels, yeah. yeah because they, those are just like designed with a lot of care and you know like they're, they're done to kind of like like we're talking about like you know whether it's uh, Red Dead or or something like uh, Origins there are more or like Riddler trophies yeah I did Riddler mm-hmm. trophies for Arkham City I completionist I platinum that game uh, but right. it was so annoying because it was really difficult to find but, but level based games like map based games are not all about that they're about like more of like like how many secrets can you unlock but it's not like it's not just here, let's just fill up the map with a bunch of things. Like a lot of these games have right. uh, things against them. Like, you know, the criticism for most of these types of games, sometimes people say that they are, you know, uh, it's a lot of repetition in the missions yeah. and stuff like that. That's yeah. why people yeah. kind of faded out in the Assassin's Creed during Syndicate and stuff. But now with the new stuff, it's, it doesn't feel all that bad because it's part of the story. Have somehow. you both played uh, GTA in particular yeah. 5? I've not finished 4 or 5, but I've played yeah, both. I've, yeah. I think I've done about 15 hours. I played on my brother's Xbox. Back and you still haven't home. finished it? No, so I, I think I did like 50%. Why? Okay, so wow. why did you not finish it? No, I'll, okay, tell, so you why I'll tell you why. <laughs> <laughs> so I was playing in my brother's room at home and I had to fly back. So I couldn't. Oh, like, you just physically yeah, couldn't. Yeah. Okay, and, cool. And I did download it again, but I'm like, oh, oh right. man, I got to do 50% again. Okay, but so I was enjoying it. I got stuck on one level uh, with who's the main white guy who lives in the mansion, which is the Bojack Horseman uh, type mansion. Oh, no, not Bojack Horseman. I, 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 I forget his name, but... Yeah. You know, uh, yeah, that, so that there's guy. one mission where you have to, I think, I can't remember. I don't know if this was the mission or this really annoyed me enough. But basically, you have to take your car and tie a chain around uh, his oh, bring, mansion bring and bring the house down, down right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And for some reason, oh, that right. mission yeah, yeah. screwed me so bad. It's like the helicopter mission in 3. I don't know if you guys remember. Or Vice City or something. You know, it was, yeah, like, it was yeah, so yeah. insanely <laughs> hard and tricky that you you got to luck was out it? if you win. If remember. you finish that level. Hmm. but for, And I finished okay. Vice City. But I, I never finished that level in 4, I think. Hmm. And I was just like, so, I can't, man. Here, I just here's, can't. here's the thing, which is, which is what, I mean, I, I feel like this is very old news to anybody that's far more savvy with video games. So I apologize. But I feel like... Um, the thing that's blowing me away consistently with Red Dead and the fact that I've been able to sustain <laughs> playing a hundred, almost 100 hours and loving it as much as I wow. still am, unlike with a GTA, mm-hmm. which, you know, by, made by the same freaking company, very similar dynamics in, in, you know, across all realms. Like, it's literally a cookie cutter, mm. Is it less just douchey? a better version of it. It's far less douchey. <laughs> uh, but it's also that, that like you said, that... Um, <laughs> laboriousness of the just doing the same mechanics again yeah. and again yeah. somehow what they've managed to do which I've had trouble with with the Arkham games with the Assassin's Creed games knowing of course that I haven't played the very, the newest ones of the Assassin's Creed games but with GTA with Arkham and with Assassin's Creed um, when you do the side missions and you're choosing to ignore the main one the main mm-hmm. plot line those side missions can be cool and they can be fun and you know you can like unlock some really neat little Gear. A, a different flavor to the game gear, whatever mm-hmm. it is. Yeah, some, something fun always happens from that. So it's good. But I'd say m- the vast majority of the time, they felt very separate. They felt distinctly like, here's a random bunch of side missions that clearly are stacked on top of each other. What so I you love kind of so forget much about, about the main story, right? right? Yeah, they feel yeah. very much like a different meal at a different table yeah. in the restaurant. Yeah. You know what I mean? Nice, but, yeah. uh, but with this one... They've, it's very small little detail with just simple um, acting performances of just like saying, you know, like when I said I spent a good 10, 15 hours on my own running around like a headless chicken exploring the rest of the map because I thought that's what mm. I was supposed to do. I ended up obviously going into territory that I wasn't supposed to go to yet. Right. And so now I find myself revisiting that thingy and somebody tells me, that's oh, cool. we're going to go, we're going to go to this cave. And I'm like, 
oh, I've been there. And then my guy says, oh, yeah, I've been there. And it doesn't take That's much awesome. for me to yeah. go, I appreciate that little bit of detail, unlike in a GTA where if I did something like that, yeah. it yeah. would be like I never I mean, went there. To be fair, also, just, that Red Dead is like one of their all in. best games ever. Like, yeah. this is, they've, they've put uh, the most yeah. effort into it. And, and I mean, a lot so of what, sacrifices what, what is, happened to make that game happen. I don't know if you saw the reports of no. the overwork. Like, oh, like a crunch. And, uh, yeah, so apparently they've, you know, loosened up a little it sh- I mean it shows because like yeah. the, the, the attention to detail is what's really blowing mm. my mind yeah like I, I, mean, I genuinely have moments like, where I like, stood up and applauded animals are, start Alone rotting like two hours room. while you're carrying them oh god and wow. like flies yeah stuff yep absolutely when you shoot when you when you reload you can see his lips move and he's counting the bullets as <laughs> it, like, like when they're you know reloading yeah man I like, just minute alright cool so, I, I'm, so so we'll we'll take a pause here I think uh, basically what we're trying to say see I really love indie games because they are like independent like it's like independent music right like it's you can see the the cracks in the in the in the in the sea and the seams and everything like that right um, but I obviously, you know, we play these huge AAA games because they can, you know, amass such a like a huge amount of information into like this one mm. visceral kind of experience. And I think uh, it pays off, man, in, in games like Red Dead, obviously, mm. and uh, Spider-Man, Arkham, whatever it is. And it's cool, man. So, um, uh, so Jishnu, final recommendation, Red Dead Redemption 2? No, it's pretty shit. <laughs> All right, <laughs> great, fine. <laughs> Um, and uh, Abhimanyu, would you rec- uh, what would you recommend? I mean, it's everything has been said about this game, and you know, I wouldn't be adding much. And because it was game of the year, but yeah. I just finished God of War. Mm. Is it four? It, well, yeah. technically, yes, four. Yeah, and it's just called God of War. And yeah. I was like, when I started, I was like, yeah, yeah, okay, fine, it's maybe a good game. I'll make my own decision. And like twenty hours later, I'm like in tears. <laughs> <laughs> and I kind of got into Norse mythology after nice. honestly. Like what happened? I think when you played Origins, yeah. that's as Creed, you kind of got into Egyptology. I'm kind of similar situation for me, nice. but with uh, Norse mythology, I'm reading. Um, Neil Gaiman. Neil Gaiman. Yeah. Book on Norse mythology. I'm reading uh, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Nice. All right, cool. I would, uh, finally, I would recommend, uh, I mean, I will recommend Super Mario Odyssey just to keep it fresh. All right, cool. That's our episode. Let us know what you guys are playing and uh, don't forget to write in contact you at gmail.com. I will see you guys in the comments. Do you wish you were smarter? Well, so do we. But the next best thing? We could make you sound smarter. And to help you with this endeavor, we are Simplified, a podcast uh, that attempts to break down the complex world around you with a little knowledge, a lot of poor jokes, and a ton of random trivia. Episodes out every Monday on the IVM Podcast app or wherever you get your podcasts. See ya! Namaste, I am Saurabh Chandra. And I am Pranay Kutistane. जब महफिल खत्म होते होते दरवाजे के बाहर पुलिया के ऊपर हम दुनिया भर की जटिल समस्याओं को सॉल्व करने में लग जाते हैं तो हो जाती है पुलियाबाजी अब आजकल के अपार्टमेंट वालों ने तो कभी पुलिया देखी नहीं होगी पर आप फीलिंग तो समझ ही सकते हैं तो आइए शामिल हो जाइए हमारी पुलियाबाजी में जहां प्रणय और मैं एक से एक इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक्स की तह तक जाएंगे आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस बिटकॉइन पाकिस्तान मेडिकल एजुकेशन करेंसी क्राइसिस कभी हम दोनों के साथ और अक्सर स्पेशल एक्सपर्ट गेस्ट की कंपनी में सुनिए हमें आईवीएम की वेबसाइट ऐप या अपने फेवरेट पॉडकास्टिंग प्लेटफॉर्म आरोप हर दूसरे हफ्ते